Well, good morning. Welcome to Sword of the Spirit Family Worship Center with Pastors Michael and Beverly McElroy. This is going to be a glorious, glorious day. And we thank you that you have tuned in uh, via Facebook, via uh, YouTube. This is our first live broadcast. So you guys forgive me for not having on a suit and tie. Uh, Jesus said that I could be comfortable. The Holy Spirit said that I could be comfortable this morning. And I'm coming to you in the presence of our home. Uh, we did not shut the church down. The church building we shut down due to the coronavirus, didn't want anyone to get infected. So the Holy Spirit told me to go live. Well, I got a little surprise for you. It's from the Brooklyn Mass Choir, and they're going to minister to us in song. Now, this song really ministered to me, and I will be back with today's message. God bless you. Hallelujah. How many of you are thankful for the name of Jesus? I know I am. If it wasn't for Jesus, we wouldn't be here. If it wasn't for the cross, we wouldn't be singing his praises. And you know, there are many names out there in Hollywood, politics, all over the world, famous names. But there's no other name but the name of Jesus. This name has power, healing, redemption deliverance, resurrection. We don't have to live the way the rest of the world lives. We can live a resurrected life because of that beautiful name. So this next song that we're gonna sing is entitled, What a Beautiful Name. And the choir and I, we wanna encourage you to sing. Sing with us, lift your hands, call upon that name, because there truly is no other name. Yeah. 
Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Glory, glory, glory. Welcome back. I want to thank everybody that's tuned in this morning. Sword of the Spirit, I see you guys out there. Sis, I see you out there. Let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we so graciously thank you for the resurrection of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Father, we thank you in the name of Jesus that Jesus is alive and he is doing well. Father, I thank you for the word that you have placed in my spirit. It is life and it is not death. It will bring gracious joy to the hearer and the believer of your precious holy word. Father, we give you the glory, we give you the honor, and we give you the praise. We thank you for it right now, Father. In Jesus' name, I thank you that your words will be my words, my words will be yours. I will say or do nothing of myself. But I just want to give you the glory, the honor, and the praise. It's in Jesus' name by which we pray. Amen. Well, good morning, good morning, good morning. Before this broadcast is over, we're going to be taking our communion. And I hope you go get your communion elements, uh, get you some grape juice, some crackers. We're just going to touch and believe by faith that you're going to be able to take this communion with us. Well, let's just dive right on into the word of God this morning. I got a message for you. Uh, my church heard this message several weeks ago, but I just want to come on and encourage you with the word of God, with everything that is going on right now. I got news for you right now. When you go to the grocery store and you pick up a jug of milk and you, the first thing you're going to look at is that expiration date on that jug of milk. What I want you to know right now, that the coronavirus has an expiration date. It is not going to be here forever. It has an expiration date on it, and we're just waiting on it to expire. Uh, join me right now in Isaiah chapter 54, verse 17. Isaiah chapter 54 and verse 17 is where we will start this morning. Isaiah 54 and verse 17. Now, like I said earlier, uh, Sword of the Spirit Ministries is familiar with this particular message. I ministered to them several weeks ago on this particular message. And we, we just want to minister it unto you. Like I said, this is our first broadcast, and we're going to be coming on every Sunday and every Wednesday evening at 7 o'clock. Isaiah chapter 54 and verse 17. Get this in your spirit this morning. It says, no weapon that is formed against you shall prosper, and every tongue that shall rise up against thee in judgment you shall condemn. This is the heritage of the service of the Lord, and their righteousness is of me, said the Lord. No weapon formed against us. It didn't say that the weapon was not going to be formed. It just said no weapon that is formed against us shall prosper. And every tongue that rises up against us shall be condemned because this is our righteous heritage in the Lord. Now, this morning, I want to encourage you with these words. Have no fear, grace is still here. Say that with me. Have no fear, grace is still here. We are living in some very trying times. And ever since the government announced that this coronavirus uh, that we're witnessing, it, it threw everybody into a pandemic, which caused an epidemic which also caused fear in most people. I've never been to the store in the last month and a half that this coronavirus has been out. Haven't been able to find the essential things that we need. Every time I walk in Walmart, there's no water. Every time I walk in Walmart, there's no tissue. Every time I walk in Walmart, the paper tiles are gone, the plates, the cups, the things that people need. And here lately, here lately, there hasn't been any food. But bless God, my, my freezer is full. Bless God, we do have tissue. We do have the essential things that we need. 
Uh, I've been wearing a mask, you know, just to protect myself. I'm doing exactly what the government of the land has told us to do. But I want you to have no fear, church. Have no fear. Grace is here. Join me in Psalms 91 now. Let's go to Psalms 91. Psalms 91. Get your Bible. Get your paper and pencil. And take notes. This is going to be good. Have no fear. Grace is here. Thank God for Jesus. He is alive and doing well. Our Savior is alive. He is not dead. He is a risen Savior. Glory be to God. That ought to make you excited enough to know that God got your back. He got your back. And if God got your back, let, let me just prove it to you. Psalms 91. Let's go to Psalms 91. I'm not going to be before you long because a lot of people can't can't stand to be in church for over an hour. But we'll sit and watch a, ba a basketball game for two hours on TV. And Lord have mercy. Don't let them go into double overtime. We're going to sit there and watch that game until it's over. But some people can't stand to be in church for no more than an hour. Well, I wish this old gray-haired preacher would hurry up and get done with his message. Just hold your seat there, Bubba. I'll be through in a few minutes. Psalms 91. Let's read it. Psalms 91, starting at verse 1. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. Look at that. That's protection. But the key to it is... You have to dwell in the secret place of God. That word dwell means that you're going to abide. That means you're going to live. That means you're going to stay exactly where you are, abiding in the secret place of the Most High. You shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. That's protection. I will say of the Lord that he is my refuge and my fortress and in God, in him will I trust. You got to rely on God. Don't rely on the government. Don't rely on, on, on the government. Don't, don't rely on nobody but God. You got to learn right now. You got to trust God. You ain't got no choice. You don't have any choice but to trust God. You got to rely on him. You got to depend on him. You, let God show himself faithful unto you. Let me tell you right now, sword of the spirit, this is the most trying time in our lives. Let me tell you right now, church, this is the most trying times in our lives. If you have never trusted God before, now you really need to learn how to lean and depend and trust in the Lord. We're going to look at some more scripture. Come on. Verse three. Surely he shall deliver thee from the snare of the fowler and from the noose and pestilence. Coronavirus shall not come nigh you. God is delivering you. And whatever he delivered you from, don't go back to it. Now, now right now, people are, people are depending on, on, on alcohol and, and drugs and things of that nature because they don't know what else to depend on. I got good news for you. Depend on God. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Look at verse four. Psalms 91, verse four. Look at all of this protection that he's giving you. He said, he shall cover thee with his feathers and under his wings, thou shall trust his truth shall be thy shield and thy buckler. Verse five, thou shall not be afraid. Don't be afraid. Have no fear. Grace is here. Thou shall not be afraid for the terror by night nor by the arrow that flyeth by the day, nor for the pestilence that walk in the darkness, nor the destruction that wasted away at noontime. Thank you, Lord. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Now watch this. A thousand shall fall at thy side and 10,000 at thy right hand, but it shall not come near you. It shall not come near you. The coronavirus shall not come near you. Stay safe. Stay in the word. Stay hooked up to Jesus. He got you covered. He got you protected. Come on. Let's look at verse 8 now. Same chapter. Psalms 91 verse 8. I'm going to read the whole chapter because some of y'all ain't read a chapter in weeks. Some of y'all ain't read a chapter in months. I don't mean to be getting on you, but you need to learn how to read your word. Depend on the word of God. It's the word. Verse 8 says, 
Only with thy eyes shall you behold and see the reward of the wicked. Because thou hast made the Lord, which is my refuge, even the, the most high thy habitation. Refuge, dwell with him, dwell with him, abide in him. Thou shalt, there shall no evil behold thee, neither shall any plague come near your dwelling. The coronavirus is not coming near you. I'm here to tell you, child of God, that if you trust in God, he will take care of you. How can you say that, Pastor? A couple of months ago in, in, in February, uh, I went and had a checkup. I thought I was having some, some back problems and, and come to find out. Uh, that my potassium was 0 0.1, my magnesia was 0 0.1, my blood pressure was 150 over 120. The doctors would not let me go home. They immediately admitted me into the emergency room, the hospital rather. They had IVs in both of my arms. They did an EKG on me, and my EKG read that I had three heart attacks. Th not one, but three. And the doctors was looking at me like they was like, Mr. McElroy, I don't believe that you're still living. You're supposed to be dead. Well, I didn't receive their report. I believe in the report of the Lord. Whose report will you believe? We believe the report of the Lord. All the while, it wasn't time for me to check out. It was time for God to check in and show that the American Medical Society that God was in control. He was in control of my life. My EKG read that I had three heart attacks. The doctors couldn't believe while I was still living, but I know why I was still living. Grace had me. Grace, it was nobody but God. Uh, come to find out, they, they got my blood pressure down. They got my potassium back up. They, 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 they got my magnesium back up. What was going on in my body, my inner organs were fighting against each other. My heart had a little swelling. My kidneys were swollen. Uh, my prostate was swollen. My bladder was full. Couldn't even use the bathroom correctly. They, they, man, you talking about punishment. I, um, they put me in a catheter. I had to wear a catheter for two weeks. Man, that is the most excruciating pain. I wouldn't wish that on no man, but it was, it was God that took care of me. Let's go back to Psalms uh, 91. And I want to read, I want to read that verse 10 one more time. There shall no evil befall thee, neither shall any plague come near your dwelling. No plague is coming near your house. For he shall give his angels charge over thee to keep you in all. His I believe the word of God. I believe I believe the word of God. God is my protector. He's my provider. He's my deliverer. He's my savior. He's my healer. He's everything. He is the great I am. He says, I am that. Glory be to God. Verse, I, I, I get excited when, when, I, when I minister the word of God. Y'all just forgive me. Verse uh, number 11. For he shall give his angels charge over thee to keep thee in. Uh, can't you see that God is protecting you throughout this whole passage of scripture? They shall bear thee up in their hands, lest you should dash your foot against the stone. Verse 13. Thou shall... Tread upon the lion and the adder and the young lion and the dragon shalt thou trample under thy feet because he hath set his love upon me. Therefore will I deliver him. I will set him up on high because he hath known my name. Do you know his name? Do you know that he's Jehovah Jireh? Do you know he's your provider? Glory be to God. Verse number 15. We shall call upon him and he shall answer us. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and I will honor him. God is with you throughout this whole coronavirus. Let me, let me tell you something. Let me tell you something. There have been many viruses in the world and we survived them all. They all had an expiration date. So the coronavirus is going to have an expiration date. The swine flu had an expiration, expiration date. Mad cow disease had an expiration date. HIV had an expiration date. AIDS had an expiration date. Also, gonorrhea and syphilis, those sexually transmitted diseases, 
All of those had an expiration date. So child of God, you got to believe that even the coronavirus has an expiration date. Have no fear. Have no fear. Grace is here. Grace is here. Now, take a look at this passage of scripture right here. Psalms 91 and verse number 16. It says, with long life will I satisfy him and show him my great salvation. I ain't checking out until I'm ready to go. <laughs> Glory be to God. I believe the report of the Lord and the report of the Lord is whose report will I believe? I believe the report of the Lord. I believe that God is my, look at this, look at this word. And I will show him such great salvation. Look what's wrapped up in your salvation. Deliverance is wrapped up in your salvation. Healing is wrapped up in your salvation. Provision is wrapped up in your salvation. Deliverance is wrapped up in your salvation. What a great soteria would do that. Nothing but a good God. God has given us his best so why shouldn't we give God our best? John 3, 16 says, for God so loved the world that he gave, he gave, he gave. Our father is a giver. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. Listen, church, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Now, let's go to 2 Timothy chapter 1. 2 Timothy chapter 1. And verse 7. I want to show you something. 2 Timothy chapter 1. Now we, we're getting down to where the rubber is meeting the road right now. And uh, once again, I thank and praise God for everybody that's watching right now. Almost done. I'm almost done. I'm getting ready to let you go home. Uh, uh, actually, today was supposed to be our family day at church. Uh Resurrection Family Day celebration. We were supposed to be eating an elaborate big dinner, but just because of social distancing ourselves, uh, we are a church with our walls. Glory to God. We are here. And some of you done already probably cooked a elaborate uh, dinner. Uh, we're cooking ours right now, smelling good in the house. Glory be to God. Let me hurry up and get done with this message. Uh, have no fear. Grace is here. Now, look at this. Second Timothy chapter one, verse seven. This scripture is going to bless you. Verse seven reads like this. For God has not given us the spirit of fear. Look at that. For God has not given us the spirit of fear. Fear is a spirit. Fear has been placed in the earth to contaminate your faith. God has not given us a spirit of fear, but look what he gave us. He gave us power, love, and a sound mind. My mind is sound right now. God has not given us a spirit of fear. Well, well, pastor, what are you saying? Are, are, are you saying that a little fear is good? No, I'm saying God has not given us a spirit of fear. No fear here. Grace is still here. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Say that with me. No fear here. Grace is still here. Glory to God. Grace is here. Well, well, is 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 a little fear okay? No, a little fear is not okay. Is a little sickness okay? No, a little sickness is not okay. Uh is 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 a little fornicating okay? No, a little fornicating is not okay. God has not given us the spirit of fear. Fear is not okay. You ought to get that in your spirit. Well, well, fear is a, is a natural instinct. No, it's not. Fear is not a natural instinct. Fear is of the devil. Fear is of the devil. The thief coming in John chapter 10 reads like this. The thief coming not but for to steal, to kill, and to destroy. But Jesus has come to give us life and to give us life more abundantly. Now, look at this. Let's check this out. Listen to me, church. Listen to me. For God has not given us the spirit of fear. Fear is an evil, demonic spirit that comes to corrupt what you believe in the word of God. No fear. No fear here. For God has not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. Now go over to 
uh, 2 Timothy chapter 1. Watch this. Watch this. Oh, I'm almost done. For those of you that tuned in late, we're ministering the word of God. Have no fear. Grace is still here. Now look at 2 Timothy chapter 1. Watch this. Watch this. Thou therefore, my son, be strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus. Be strong in the grace that is in, <coughs> excuse me, that is in Christ Jesus. One more scripture, y'all. One more scripture. Then we're going to take communion. We're going to pray. Uh, we're going to invite you to receive Jesus into your life. If you never received Jesus into your life, now is the time to receive Jesus Come on over here. Well, uh, let me, let me, I just want to read two more scriptures. And finally, my brethren, go to Philippians. This one just dropped in my spirit. Let's go to Philippians chapter two. Philippians chapter two. <laughs> oh, Philippians chapter two. Look like my brother cutting up on, on, on Facebook Live. Jeff, I love you. Uh, behave, you're in church. <laughs> oh, man, my goodness. Philippians chapter 2, verse number 9. Now, get this in your spirit. Get this in your spirit right now. Philippians chapter 2 and verse number 9. We're live on YouTube and Facebook. So if you don't have a Facebook page, Go catch us on YouTube. I got two streams going. So, uh, and once this live broadcast is over, it will probably stay up for a while. So look at Philippians chapter two. Philippians chapter two, verse nine. Ah, oh, this is going to bless you. Wherefore God has highly exalted him and given him a name which is above every name. God has highly exalted Jesus and given him a name which is above every name. Now check this out. Verse 10, that at the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow of things in heaven and things in earth and things even under the earth. There are three places where the name of Jesus is exalted in heaven. It is exalted in earth and it is exalted even in hell. And that every tongue should confess that Jesus is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Let me ask you a question. Now, we just read that Jesus' name is highly exalted above every name. That at the name of Jesus, every knee must bow and every tongue must confess. Let me ask you a question. Is Corona a name? Yes. Is AIDS a name? Yes. Is the swine flu a name? Yes. Is the bird flu a name? Yes. Is mad cow disease a name? Yes. All of those names must bow down. Is McElroy a name? Yes. All of those names must bow down to the name of Jesus who is highly exalted. God is highly exalted. He's highly exalted above every name. Last scripture. First John chapter four. First John chapter four. <clears throat> Excuse me. First John chapter four and verse four. First John chapter four and verse four. That's regular, not regular John, but premium John. First John chapter four and verse four. Look at what it says. You are of God, little children, and have overcome them because greater is he that is in you. <coughs> excuse me. Greater is he that, is <coughs> excuse me. Greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. You got the greater one living on the inside of you. The greater one is living on the inside of you. You are of God, little children, and have overcome them because greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. Take a look at verse 18, same chapter. Verse 18, same chapter. <clears throat> First John chapter four, verse 18. Oh, this is really going to bless you. 
This is my last scripture. And I will rest my case after this, just like a defense lawyer defending his client. I will rest my case. Verse 18. There is no fear in love, but perfect love casteth out fear because fear has torment. Fear has torment. Some people are afraid to go on a cruise ship. Fear has torment. Some people are afraid to fly. Fear has torment. Some people are afraid of heights. Fear has torment. Some people are afraid of roller coasters. I, I love roller coasters I, and I'm not afraid to fly. Fear has torment. Look at that again. Let's look at Let's read that one more time. <clears throat> First John chapter four, verse 18. There is no fear in love for God so loved the world. There is no fear in love because perfect love cast out fear because fear has torment. Watch this. He that feareth is not made in love. <clears throat> he that fears is not made perfect in love. We love him because he first loved us. God is love. Say this with me. No fear here. Grace is here. <clears throat> and like a defense lawyer, I rest my case. I hope you got all those scriptures in your spirit. I hope you wrote them down. Father, in the name of Jesus, we so graciously thank you for your written and your spoken word. <clears throat> we thank you right now that we had an opportunity to minister to these, your precious sheep. I thank you, Lord, that your words were my words and my words were yours. I give you nothing but the glory, the honor, and the praise. It's in Jesus' name by which we pray. Amen and amen and amen. All right, church. Let's take communion right now. I got my communion elements. I got my, got my cup. I don't know what's in your cup, but it's grape juice in my cup. Uh, try, to, try to be nice and, and not put any alcoholic beverages in your cup. But that's between you and God. If your heart does not condemn you, that's between you and God. The bread. Uh, <coughs> excuse me. The bread represents the body of Jesus. The bread represents my healing right now. I am the healed, protecting my health. So with the bread, take this bread and, and confess after me. I declare that this bread represents the once battered body of Jesus. I am the healed, protecting my health in Jesus' name. You may eat the bread. <clears throat> the wine represents the blood. There's a old spiritual song that we used to sing when I was in the Baptist church, I know it was the blood. I know it was the blood. I know it was the blood for me. <clears throat> One day when I was lost, you know that he died up on the cross. Oh yeah. I know it was the blood for me. Thank you, Lord, for shedding your blood. Repeat after me, church. I declare in the name of Jesus that nothing can wash away my sins, only but the blood of Jesus. With this cup, we will do this in the remembrance of you. I thank you, Lord, that I am the saved. I thank you, Lord, that I am delivered. I thank you, Lord, that I am protected and provided for. We give you the glory, the honor, and the praise. You may drink. Thank you, Lord. Well, church, this is going to conclude our broadcast for today. Join me Wednesday. At seven o'clock, God's got a message for you. Uh, 
It's, it's, I'm going to give you the title already. Can God call you faithful? Can God call you faithful? Well, this is the end of our broadcast. For those of you that, that want to give, you can give to our cash app. You ain't got to check out now because the church got to have lights. The church got to have water. We got to be able to continue to do what God has called us to do. So uh, you can text your tithes or your offerings to our cash app. Our cash app. Here's the number right here. 601-416-9569-601-416-9569. Or you can type in dollar sign sword of the spirit church on your cash app. No offering is too small. No offering is too big. We thank you. We give you glory. We give you honor and we give you praise, Lord. Now unto him who's able to do exceedingly abundantly above all things that we ever ask or think of him. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight. O Lord, you are our strength and you are our redeemer. Thank you all for tuning in. God bless you. See you Wednesday.